Okay, well, thank you so much and good to see all of you. Um, I was asked whether I wanted to share some slides and I think it's always a bit of a gamble, you know, death by PowerPoint. So I, I brought a few just also in terms of background info. So I'm happy to share that also afterwards. Um, and I'll, I guess my main idea is really to, to leave you with some food for thought and then we'll happy can, you know, to follow up on any point that you might find most relevant. Um, uh, I guess the starting point is I actually, this was relatively all short notice. So I didn't really have much time to actually look at, at your particular area that you represent. So but I guess that would be good in the discussion to maybe narrow it down a bit, you know, what does this mean? Um, you know, to your local communities. But, um, you know, I live in London, I'm a member of a local community here. And actually, my institute, we have quite a lot of experience with also the citizen assemblies and so on. So I think that might be actually quite useful if there's any feedback or so. I'm very happy to also facilitate that. Um, yeah, so I think the, the focus is on, on businesses and climate, particularly also climate impact. And that's kind of the work that I've been focusing on most of my research, but also when I was working um, in the private sector before I went back into academia. So I'll just leave you with a couple of, of thoughts and also some of the insights from the UK climate change risk assessment that came out last year and which the government um, just sort of published um, a response to, and then we'll, we can take it from there. So just to begin with, and I, I like this as sort of framing where we are um, when it also comes to businesses. I mean, I think, you know, there's been a huge shift in corporate awareness and, you know, positioning and, and so on. Um, but then, you know, when it comes to real action, what does it mean day to day business? Um, you know, I think that the picture is still much unclear. And in the, the maybe most of my work is focused on, on impact and what we do to increase resilience. And I think it's this notion that we kind of know, you know, climate change is here and it's happening and we need to do obviously something about it on the emission side, but we also need to, to deal with the climate impact. And, um, you know, I think our approach there is just very reactive and remains reactive. And that's kind of the question, you know, what can businesses also do to change that and to become more proactive? and to address that, that imbalance. And I think that's kind of a useful way of framing it because it just shows you what, what's going wrong in a way. Um, and then I think um, this is quite a good, when, when you look at communities and you know your local community, when you then think about different, what, well, I often use this term climate resilience. I don't know what terms you have been using and while well, we can spend all night discussing terms and so on. So I just put this out there. Because I think it's really important to, to think this in terms of different types of capital and having a, a holistic perspective. And that sounds great, you know, very academic, but actually it works at a community level. And we're doing this with a couple of communities across England, Germany, um, various developing countries. You see a lot of the NGOs there. And it really helps to sort of understand, well, where I am in terms of my role in the community, but also where's our community, you know, where, where are the strengths, where are the weaknesses and how is climate change impacting that? And then what's, you know, what, what is the, what are the opportunities of jointly addressing that? So it's kind of turns it around into this, um, yeah, I call it business case, but it's more also positive narrative. So I, you know, I just thought I'll, I'll mention that because I don't know if that played any role in, in the discussions that you had so far. But it clearly also helps when we're framing this with businesses. And, you know, I think there's one observation when we talk about climate in a business context, you know, there, there are obviously risk and cost and so on. But it's also about, you know, opportunities, um, chances that and, and, you know, adjustments that can be made and a sort of more positive narrative there. So just to kind of put that out there. Um, and yeah, I said I wouldn't mention terminologies, but I think this might be useful when, particularly with larger corporates, they kind of look at climate change, the lens of three aspects. And that's mainly driven also now by regulators who are asking for disclosure and reports. So there's the physical risk side, um, the transition risk side, which sort of is linked to, to achieving net zero, 
And then also liability risk, um, you know, and that's also this question around greenwashing and, you know, litigation. So that's a good framing, I guess. Um, it helps, but I would say um, there's a lot of silo thinking going on about these different types of risks, but in my view, they are all interconnected and that's important. Um, particularly with larger corporates, you know, there has been a big shift in, you know, what they do internally to try and assess these, these risks. And, you know, here you see just some examples, you know, particularly on the financial sector, investors and so on. And there's the TCFD, you know, the, the, the acronym for this kind of disclosure movement. So, you know, that's an interesting shift and in development. I always say, you know, that's great, but, you know, that should really only be the first step. And then the question is what we actually do with the disclosure. And it is, is it just disclosure for its own sake or, you know, what, what are the implications? And I think this is then kind of a much, much harder question. And I'm, um, because as you can see here, you know, first of all, you know, there is more information being produced by corporates about, you know, how they view climate risk. They might publish some of the risk assessment, but, you know, is this then also followed up by solutions, you know, identifying and implementing actions and so on. And we've done this survey here, and I think, you know, it just shows us that it is still early days. And I should say, you know, this is by no means, you know, wholly representative survey, but it captures some interesting stories that emerge from smaller companies. You know, this was across the UK. We also had quite a strong London um, response rate there and larger corporates across different sectors. So I think that's important to keep in mind, um, you know, that for, for many businesses, it is still early days in, in yeah, understanding risk and addressing them. And then, I think this might be useful. Again, I don't know if you uh, have already had a chance to look at it. Um, actually, I put that website down there because it is really good. It's, I, I can only recommend it. Um, it, was, it was sort of put live last year um, with this independent climate change risk assessment. And I wrote the chapter on business and industry and I'll briefly talk you through some findings, but they're really interesting um, sort of underpinning reports and they've tried, you know, quite, I think quite well to also address this in terms of different audiences. You know, there's even a children's report, I think um, on, you know, what, what's happening to the climate risk across the UK. So I think that might be just, just useful to take a look at. Um, and yeah, then that's kind of the long list of risk and opportunities that was identified there. I'm not gonna go into detail. And the idea is re really also to signal, you know, where is action already happening? Where do we know the risks are increasing? And, you know, where are we actually on track? And, you know, the more action needed, you see that dominates here. Further investigation doesn't mean that the risk isn't big. It just means that we don't know really a lot. To, um, and then we have sustained current action. That's kind of a smaller part of it. So that just gives you a bit of an idea. But I think for, as we're talking about business, so um, the, the climate change risk assessment broke it down into sort of key risks that, that we are already seeing um, as, as having an impact on businesses. And yeah, you, you see them listed here. So it is on the flooding side. Um, and you know, sort of coastal issues, um, water scarcity, but then also this whole question about having access to finance and insurance and, you know, what that actually means for businesses. And then um, infrastructure disruption, that's a big one. Um, higher temperatures and working environments, uh, disruption to supply chains, and then also opportunities and our businesses able to, to grapple opportunities. So, you know, I'm just going to say there's about, it. sorry, time goes really quickly. There's yeah. about one minute left. Sonia. Yeah. So, you know, I'll just put this out there to give you a feel for it. And, you know, that framing, you know, looking at what this means in the context of, you know, your local community and so on might be, might be useful. Um, there's, there are two things I just wanted to mention. One question is about lock-in. So, you know, we know businesses are making decisions today um, and, you know, they're not reflecting the risk they face tomorrow. And it's like around where we build and how we build and so on. And that poses risks. And I think that's an important point to to consider. 
The other one is who who's actually making decisions right now and you know who are the different actors who can actually influence this at a community level um, and I think that might be something to come back to and then the last point that you know there are also some environmental justice implications particularly in terms of insurance and investment and you know we did some work around these these flood risk ghettos um, that we expect to actually um, come up across the country um, in terms of new build in, in high risk zones and you know what implication that then has. So yeah, just a very quick um, high level summary. Sorry that this was not more specific towards your local community, but I think there's a lot that we could take away and maybe um, explore further in the, in the discussion. Thanks. Mm -hmm.